Earlier today, community and nonprofit organizations held a press conference to push back on what they call dangerous anti-immigrant rhetoric from County Executive Ed Day and Congressman Mike Lawler. Here's what they had to say. Good morning, everybody. Um, thanks, everyone, for showing up from the press, from all of our community members who are present here, um, individuals who aren't available um, to be present with us today, but we know that they're standing with us in the messages that we'll be sharing with all of you today. We thank the local mayor of Spring Valley for giving us this space as well to speak to all of you. Um, as many of you know, there have been a lot of conversations regarding communications with New York City and Rockland County and the asylum seekers that are being bused into our county. Um, this past Tuesday night, our organization, Proyecto Faro, which is an immigrant-led organization connected with allies and community volunteers to serve those who are most insecure due to their um, documentation status, are present here. And we called a meeting last Tuesday um, because we had a lot of concerns about some of the rhetoric that was coming out. Um, and that the representation that was being spoken of was not a representation of all of Rockland County. So we are bringing our voices today to have space to be heard regarding our concerns. Um, there were over 80 people from our county that were present in that meeting on Tuesday and two dozen organizations. Um, we hope to see more of them speaking today, but we also understand that there's a fear of losing funding, which is the survival of many of the organizations who help and support undocumented and documented immigrants in this community to be able to create a safe and sustainable community for everyone. Um, there has also been other retaliation that sometimes happens when folks speak out. Um, so we understand the absence of folks who are here, and we recognize the invisible presence, the invisible labor, the invisible contribution that makes Rockland County an amazing place to live and welcome other people who have built up this country, this country, yes, this country, that wasn't a mistake, as well as this county. Um, as you can see from the flags behind us, we celebrate all of these different heritages, um, not just because of the month, that it lands on, but because of the people who live here and contribute, contribute in many ways that is misunderstood. Um, so we want to clarify those misunderstandings with the reality, the lived reality of the folks who are standing here today and the people that we are representing. Um, so thank you for those who have showed up. Um, many people have helped to plan this. Uh, many showed up yesterday in the potential arrival of the asylum seekers at the Armani Hotel in Orangeburg yesterday. And we know that there's many that are with us. And you might not see them in front of your cameras today, but know that they are here, they are living here, they are struggling here, and they are, str and they are also thriving. Um, in particular ways in welcoming other people, whether they have documentation or not. We are not taking away anyone's humanity or dignity because of a piece of paper and a broken system that doesn't allow a faster process to remind folks of the need and moral responsibility to stand up and show up when other people are in need. So I'm gonna open up the microphone um, to our first speaker from the Spring Valley Collaborative, um, which represents over 40 organizations here in this particular town. Um, please welcome Lillian Jimenez. Thank you, good morning. Um, so um, I'm really pleased to be here on behalf of the Spring Valley Collaborative. As Maria said, there's about 45 organizations, non-for-profit and governmental agencies that work to provide services to the people in Spring Valley. And one of the things that I think is really important for us to understand is that the asylum seekers are people who have been vetted by the government of the United States and that they are here legally and that it is a human right for them to seek um, asylum in the United States. The other uh, concern that we have is that uh, people have been very nervous about safety and security because of the language that has been used about the arrival of these men, because they are men that are coming into the county. And as I said, they are vetted. And the reality is that the city is providing funds for their maintenance, not just their housing, but their medical costs. They are even providing laundry services for them. And so these folks are gonna be here for four months and they're gonna be taken care of. They have social workers who will work with them. 
etc. The last thing I want to say is that immigrants are the most resourceful people in the world. They have to be. They are escaping terror. And so when they come here, they really develop social networks. And they rely on the not-for-profits who are here to provide them services. So who's going to integrate these folks after those four months? It's going to be the community-based organizations, Proyecto Faro, Catholic Charities, all of the organizations in uh, Rockland County that are providing services already, that are providing ESL services so people can learn the language. And these newcomers are learning English faster than any other newcomers that have come. So again, we want to make sure that they are integrated into our community, and it's the community-based organizations that are going to do that. And so we're calling on the county to provide more support for the community-based organizations because they're going to come to, uh, uh, to those organizations. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lillian. And um, next, we have Stephen White, who is a retired social worker who's present with us today and also is um, a participant in many of the local organizations here. Steve? Thank you. Good, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm here today because we're told that there's a crisis. And I'm here to ask, exactly what crisis are you talking about? What I see is that for these few people who are coming to stay in a hotel in Orangeburg, that they're the ones that the federal government is actually living up to its obligations to uh, international treaties for asylum seekers. So I don't really see a crisis there. What I see is that for the one time regarding recent immigrants, we see the federal government standing up and doing what it's required to do by law. On the other hand, right here, where we're sitting in Spring Valley, Thousands upon thousands of hardworking people are paying rent to live in uh, apartments that have not been inspected for safety. It's the responsibility of the government to make sure that everybody has a safe place to live that they're inspected. It's gotten so bad that the state of New York has actually taken away the responsibility for inspecting our local bu bu buildings here in the village of Spring Valley where I live and given it over to the county to do the inspections because people are living in unsafe conditions. This is a right that they have. This is the real crisis that's going on for thousands of people right here in Spring Valley. Five people died in a fire not too long ago in an uninspected home after the county had been ordered to inspect those homes. That's the real crisis that's happening for us living here, not just immigrants, but everyone. So I'm here today to ask, what crisis are you going to address? Why are you not addressing the real emergency of people living in danger day by day? And making up a phony crisis for people who are the ones who are the only ones who actually seem to be the governments living up to their obligations to help them. And I, as someone who's worked day in and day out with recent immigrants here inside of the health department of the county of Rockland County, recently retired, I can tell you there's every day there's a need which is not being met. And that's the real crisis that's going on. And I'm calling on our government to stop making up phony crises to divide us and start bringing us together around all of our needs and the government's responsibility to care for the people who live within the borders of this county. Thank you so much. Some powerful words from Lillian, from Steve. And next up, we have Emily Finer from Rockland United. Good morning, everybody. I'm here representing Rockland United, a group that has um, dedicated itself to promoting progressive leaders in Rockland, both in uh, elected office and also in other leadership positions. I'm also here um, as a social worker because my professional ethics demand that I stand up for marginalized people and people who are not given an opportunity to voice their own concerns and advocate on their own behalf, often due to fear. Um, this crisis is a crisis of our choosing. It is a failure of policy. And that failure goes back decades in the United States and reflects failures by both Republican and Democratic administrations. It's wrong. We are choosing not to solve this problem and we are demonizing people 
who are simply trying to find a path to live their lives in peace and give their families an opportunity to thrive. We, as Americans, should be standing for that opportunity. We, as Rocklanders, should be standing with people who need that opportunity. And leaders should be standing and demanding that they work together with county, state, and national officials to solve a crisis that we have chosen not to solve. Instead, we have leaders choosing fear. Instead, we have leaders demonizing people and stoking up hysterical responses like we saw this past week in this county. It is shameful. It is not what we stand for. These are asylum seekers. They are human beings. As Americans, we take in far fewer refugees than other much smaller countries do in terms of percentage of population. We need to be leaders on both an international level, but certainly here in Rockland County in New York State, we need to be leaders to show that communities can be welcoming and opening their doors to people while insisting our elected officials work together to solve the problem. Thank you. Thanks so much, Emily, for sharing that with us. Next up, we have Taylor Mondelbaum from Orange Town Dems. Good morning, everybody. So I'm going to start with what I view as kind of the negative side of things and then hopefully try to talk about the positive and what is amazing about these individuals. So. When I got word of all of this, um, being in Orangetown, um, not only a uh, representative of the Orangetown Democratic Committee, but also a uh, member of Rockland United, um, we're in the belly of the beast with this crisis. Um, and immediately, the negative that I heard and what I witnessed from some individuals who sought this opportunity as a fear-mongering tactic to fundraise, to demonize and inhumanize the individuals who are coming here um, saying derogatory terms that I'm not going to repeat in front of these cameras, um, that it was horrific. And these are our neighbors. These are individuals who represent us, um, explaining to people all these negative and terrible things that are not true, that are fundamentally untrue. Um, these people are asylum seekers. They're following the legal process. And I just want to have people kind of internalize the fact that when you grow up somewhere, when you're home, you feel a certain way. When you need to leave your home, when you need to go somewhere thousands of miles away to survive, to feel safe, that's profound and that's traumatic. And these individuals are doing that. And they're being put in places, they're being thrown around just to survive. So I grew up uh, actually in many places, but one place I grew up is Huntington Station in New York. And we had, um, we had conflict in our community years ago. Um, we had, uh, and we still do have a strong El Salvadorian community there. I'm now a proud resident of Rockland County. And one thing I wanna emphasize is I've lived this experience. I've been in a diverse community and the impact that immigrants, regardless of documentation status, have in our community is incredible. It's positive and I want to communicate that publicly unabashedly to make sure that people understand that these people are doing profound and incredible things to survive. They're, sh they should be welcomed as our neighbors and I hope that our community leaders who are here today you know continue to do their incredible work and the ones who are spewing you know negative rhetoric really rethink and consider what they're doing and the potential consequences that they might have. Um, I hope, too, that we really consider how we work with these individuals and we don't, again, demonize them, but view them as our neighbors and view them as people who want to be part of our community or at least help them one way or another to make sure that they feel as comfortable as possible. Because again, this is a challenge, this is a crisis, and we are here to help and we should be here to help. This is what our country was built upon. Thanks again. and. Thank you so much, Taylor. Would you ask people when they come up to call their name? Oh, 
Sure. If folks, when folks come up, can you also spell your name? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and, sorry. <laughs> yes. Um, my name is Maria Marasigan. My pronouns are she, her, her, Sha, and Ella. And I'm a co-executive director with Proyecto Faro. Um, my name Maria, M-A-R-I-A. My last name is M-A-R-A-S-I-G-A-N. We'll also take more questions later. <laughs> um, next up, we have the Fellowship of Reconciliation, where Ariel Gold as, will be followed also by Susan Smith from the Fellowship of Reconciliation. My name is Ariel Gold, A R I. E L G O L D, and I'm the executive director of the Fellowship of Reconciliation USA. The Fellowship of Reconciliation is the oldest interfaith organization in the United States with 50 branches around the world. We are commanded to love our neighbor and to welcome the stranger. Before my family, settled in Rockland County and raised children and contributed here to our county, we immigrated into Utica, New York. This was the late 1800s, fleeing the pogroms of Eastern Europe, sorry, early 1900s. Utica since then over time dropped its population by about 50%. This was after my family had left as well. But Utica's population has risen in recent years and the city has come back to life thanks to immigrants, thanks to Bosnians and the Yemeni community who have, brought, who have started new businesses, filled jobs, and made a community thrive again. Refugees, immigrants, asylum seekers are not liabilities. They are assets to our communities. The times in the U.S. history where we have shut the door on refugees, the Chinese Exclusion Act, the turning the St. Louis ship around during the Holocaust and sending Jews back to die in, in Europe are shameful periods in American history. We ask that we not repeat those shameful acts now. The time is now to act. The time is now to welcome the stranger, to love thy neighbor, and to be proud here in Rockland County to bring asylum seekers, to bring refugees, and to bring migrants into our community. And we know that we will benefit both economically and culturally from doing so. Thank you. Hi, I'm Susan Smith with the Fellowship of Reconciliation, S-U-S-A-N-S-M-I-T-H, she, her, and I am on the indigenous land of the Ramapo Lenape Nation. Each and every one of us, with the exception of the indigenous people here, our parents, our grandparents came from somewhere else. It used to be the Italians, the Jews, the Irish, who were looked down upon. Down the road from the Fellowship of Reconciliation, there's, there's a restaurant, three guys from Italy. All of us, with the exception of the indigenous people, have come from somewhere else, and we, we came here as children of God. We are all brothers and sisters, got created by God because we needed to be taken care of we needed refuge, we were fleeing persecution, we were fleeing hardship and poverty. And today, here we are in the same situation. And I will take a moment to share with you the International Sanctuary Declaration. This is a covenant signed by more than 110 organizations from around the world, including the Presbyterian Church USA, a national organization, uh, Jewish organizations, Catholic organizations, uh, Sikh organizations, uh, organizations from all over the world, and it states, we set forth five principles of sanctuary that can be used to guide grassroots and governmental response to the global es uh, escalation of displacement. 
It is in conformity and solidarity with the United Nations Coven Convention related to the status of refugees of 1941. We express our deep concern for the refugee families, children, and all migrants, and as well as those struggling to live within our borders. We demand a compassionate response as we care for these families. We demand due process, family unity, restorative justice, and civil initiative. We covenant with one another to work together for a just and humane response to all migrants, to all people, all of us created by God, above all to love each other as neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Susan, and um, thank you for that reminder of the land that we're on, um, really acknowledging the Ramapo Lenape and all Native Indigenous folks um, who sometimes have to also leave their land due to dangers and um, intimidation and just coming back to the history of this country of what has made it what it is and the need to re-examine the shamefulness and also the opportunity for course correction. So I'm going to invite the next person up here with that reminder, um, Andrea Panjwani, who is the chair of the Rockland Immigration Coalition. Andrea. Good morning, all. My name is Andrea, A-N-D-R-E-A, -E Panjwani, P as in Peter, A, N like Nancy, J, W, A, N like Nancy, I. And I'm here today. Um, representing the Rockland Immigration Coalition, and also as a mother and a person of faith and a resident of Rockland County. Um, on behalf of the Rockland Immigration Coalition, you, we want to express that there is a generous radical welcome here in this county. Um, I feel like that the folks who want to be welcoming have not gotten the press, and we really appreciate you coming out today. I think it's really important to speak with integrity when we're discussing immigration. Um, as, as some have referenced already, the folks who are coming here have been vetted. They, they have fled serious persecution and extreme poverty. They have undergone credible fear interviews. They are under ICE supervision and are lawfully pursuing asylum. They are being, and them being in our community is not going to deprive us in any way of our services or our assets or our resources. To the contrary, immigrants bring a lot of value wherever they go. Um, they, re they revitalize economies, they create more jobs and businesses than Americans. Um, these are all documented facts. Immigrants pay taxes. Um, I, the latest statistics I have are from 2019, but immigrants in New York alone paid almost $59 billion in taxes and had spending power of over $132 billion. Um, immigrants make our tapestry so much richer. Uh, one of the reasons my husband and I chose to raise our kids here because it's diverse and it's rich and it's a beautiful place to live. Um, in large part because we have immigrants from all over the world here in Rockland County. And as a person of faith, I want to echo some of the things that the Fellowship of Reconciliation has said. The Jewish Bible and the Old Testament tell us to treat immigrants as we treat citizens. And the New Testament says, if you don't welcome immigrants, you don't love God. So it's a matter of dignity and humanity to welcome immigrants. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, next, I'd like to invite Elizabeth Roberts from the Rockland Jews for Immigrant Justice. Hello, it's Elizabeth, E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H, Roberts, R-O-B-E-R-T-S. Uh, Rockland is a county where neighbors show up for neighbors, and immigrants are welcome here. Rockland Jews for Immigrant Justice represents six Jewish organizations and congregations in the county, and we work in solidarity with Proyecto Faro, Rockland's first immigrant-led community organizing project that is building immigrant power and centers the leadership of immigrants. And we will continue to harness material support from Rockland's sizable Jewish community for our immigrant neighbors and as part of our commitment to upholding the Jewish value of uh, welcoming the stranger. Immigrants are our neighbors who we interact with in all aspects of our community in our daily lives, 
at school, at the supermarket, at the park. Rockland's large immigrant population contributes enormously to our local economy. They undergird many industries, they pay taxes, and they are a large consumer block. They work with and for us, many without permission. They're exploited because of their uh, lack of documentation in so many cases. Their poor housing, Steve mentioned, is in large part because they are unable to uh, push for, for safer housing because they are already exploited and, and fearing uh, you know, being uh, deported or, or detained. They frequent, frequently work in unsafe conditions. They're intimidated to push for improvements on their job sites because of their documentation status. Immigrants clean our homes. They you know, do farm work. They do landscaping, construction, restaurant work, and many other jobs those citizens, those with citizenship or documentation opt out of doing. We've seen politicians frame immigrants as a burden when immigrants, in fact, are enriching businesses and strengthening our local and national economies. And people leave their homes home countries because they have to, not because they want to. Their families and communities are fractured, and when you listen to the stories of the people who arrived to our country, you learn most of them have survived harrowing journeys, their unspeakable losses, dangerous and prolonged waits at the border, and heartbreaking separation from their families just to find safety and survival. And those who make it come with nothing, and they have to start over, often in isolation, without the support of their families and communities, this in addition to the trauma that forced them to leave. War, oppression, violence, climate disaster. These are someone's parents, children, spouses, and loved ones. And they deserve to be treated with human dignity. Like many communities across the country, our county is experiencing a crisis in terms of availability of safe housing, affordable housing, and the, this affects vulnerable immigrant communities disproportionately. Rather than demonize the hardworking families, who have come to our community in search of safety, like generations of immigrants that preceded them, including our own families, my own family. We call on elected leaders to partner with community leaders to find solutions that address the barriers to safe, humane housing and access to fair and equitable education. Migration is not a political problem, and we urge officials to stop politicizing a rapidly accelerating global humanitarian crisis. This should not be framed as a conflict, pitting neighbors against neighbors. It must be understood and responded to as a complex, growing global problem that requires cooperation, prioritizing people's lives over abstractions like borders and documents. Rockland must find its compassion on the whole. I, I know the many, many people who couldn't be here today are you know representing so many organizations so many communities you know and are horrified about the kind of rhetoric that is coming out of the local government and feel that they are they are in fact being spoken for incorrectly there is not a monolith and the the, the rockland county government does not speak for many many people as jews we have always been uh, migrants and when we say welcome the stranger, it's not a platitude, it's a call to action. We believe in Tikkun Olam to repair and improve the world. We stand in solidarity with immigrants who live in Rockland or want to make their homes here. Immigrants deserve compassion, human dignity, a living wage, safe homes and schools, access to comprehensive affordable health care, including mental health care and support for trauma they've endured. And these are the same hopes our ancestors had. We must find our common humanity and start collaborative problem solving. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, everyone who's standing here behind me. Um, and again, all of the people who weren't able to make it today. Sorry. All the people who weren't able to make it today. Um, I think we've heard a lot regarding the truths of the situation versus the things that we've been hearing that are causing fear. And that is not the place that our group is coming from. We are not here to build fear. We are here to remind folks of the love that is present here in Rockland County. We are here to remind folks that there is not a scarcity here. There is a problem with distribution. There is a problem with policy. And those things are changeable. Again, coming back to the shamefulness of what has happened, there is an opportunity for course correction. And so we are inviting folks to come with us. We are inviting folks who may have said some harmful things, that there is a chance to fix those things. 
There are things that we can improve. There are alternative solutions, but those are not going to happen with the current state that we are in, which is true, is a state of emergency. And the state of emergency did not happen because of announcement of a bus of potential asylum seekers coming to Rockland County. We have, as was stated in the press conference this past Monday, a natural migration that has been going on for hundreds of years and continues on a daily basis beyond 340 people, beyond, beyond 60 people. And we don't have the, the exact statistics on those numbers, but what we do know is when someone comes and asks for help, we have that moral responsibility again, irregardless of what our country is, what those borders are, what our religion is, that when we have particular privileges and have that opportunity to help someone, we will step towards that. Proyecto Faro moves in a way that is based off of mutual aid. So this false narrative of undocumented um, immigrants coming to Rockland County to drain and deplete the resources of Rockland County is not true. During the pandemic, during the time of COVID, Proyecto Faro's base of volunteers was majority, guess what? Undocumented immigrants, many who had lost their jobs that were already low, low paying. And they were coming out in 30 to 40 people on a very consistent basis until today are still continuing to work with us, serving people with food, offering legal services after they've received it because they got help at one time. And now they're returning that favor to this county. And they're not asking, what is your country? What is your ID? Where do you come from? What language do you speak? We want to support all those needs regarding translation so that people can have a um, a better understanding of what their rights are. And a lot of things, even this press conference, apologies that we don't have it in multiple languages. Um, but we will take that responsibility to go back to our community and, and share the messages that we're sharing, that we're welcoming. And for the folks who are here who are fearful at this moment, because when that statement came out this Friday, the workers, workers who were bringing mattresses to Armani Hotel were intimidated and threatened and physically attacked by documented folks here. That is a state of emergency. There are multiple states of emergency that existed prior to this announcement of the bus and we need to address those things. And we need to come back to resources. There, as I stated, there is not a scarcity, there's actually an abundance, and we need to return to that. There are a lot of folks here, and I invite all the folks in Rockland County who have the privileges to not have the same risk to step up and speak up, connect with any of us. We are not here to be divisive. That is not the language that we're trying to do, uh, we're trying to use. We want to make sure that we come and connect. We build the relationships that maybe we haven't had a chance to build more deeply. We are not here for a photo op. We are not here to be tokenized as immigrants, as the good versus the bad. We are here to, to make Rockland great, as we have been making and may have been forgotten. And so we are here to remind you all of you who are in a fearful state right now, to take a deep breath, to get grounded with the land, the land that you're on, that you benefit from, that was stewarded by the indigenous communities of the Ramapo Lenape. That then other um, immigrants who were fleeing, as was mentioned earlier, came here and stewarded this land, stewarded this community. And we have new folks coming in. And anyone here who is documented, who may come to a point where you are in danger and you need support and you are in a state of emergency, we will show up for you. With whatever limited resources we have, we will dig deeper because there's a lot here. And so let's not forget the abundance that we are living here with and also that there are financial resources that exist here in America, here in Rockland County, here in New York State, and we need to make sure that those go to the proper channels so it's not supporting someone's political campaign, 
but the work on the ground every day of community organizers who are there to listen, to help, and make sure that everyone is safe. Um, sorry, I'm losing my voice a little bit. Um, but we care. Our community cares. Undocumented folks care. Um, and we want to come and bring that care together to offer it because we have it. And to not offer it and say that some people chose to live here because they want the borders is, if we really examine that, is selfish. And we are not a selfish county. We are generous and we invite folks to come and arrive here and we will do the best that we can to support you. And we're also asking for the needed support to be successful in that because we do need to think about after four months. What does that mean? Because who's going to catch them? It's going to be all of us. And we're ready with arms open and, and it can be successful and it can be sustainable. But we need to do that together and conversations and relationships need to be genuine. Um, and the politicians need to speak with each other and not use folks who are in a position of, um, of vulnerability to be moved around like objects. These are human beings that deserve better and so we need to offer better. So thank you everyone for showing up today.